Hello viewers, you are welcome to another episode of this talk show called by Ebit Media. And this very day we have some JCCF executives in our midst. So please, I would like you all to introduce yourself to our amicable viewers. Okay, thank you so much, sir. My name is Bright Enchine, the general coordinator of JCCF Uniport. Ma? Uh, my name is Grace Oba. I'm the JPIC chairperson, and JPIC stands for Joint Political Implementation Committee. So I'm the chairperson of JCCF Unicode. Wow, very impressive. How about you, sir? Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I am Chidi Miraku. I'm the assistant general coordinator of JCCF Unicode. Thank you very much. So, viewers, we've all heard from them. Tonight, we are going to be having a very, very important discussion. And we'll be considering a very important topic, which I believe is best suitable that this topic be handled by the JCC executives that we have here. I want you all to open your mind as we drink from the world of wisdom by these executives. So, once again, you all are welcome. Thank, Thank you very much, sir. You are welcome. So, we'll be considering a topic, a very critical topic, that says striking the balance between politics and academics as a student. Now, I would like to ask some few questions, all of you don't mind. Now, three. Thank you very much. Uh, we are cool. I guess I have to start with you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, let me start with our general coordinator. So, so, what do you think, what is your opinion about politics as a Christian student? Should Christian students in our days and time be engaged actively in politics? Okay, thank you so much, sir. All right. Now, politics um, is a very good thing to be involved with, especially if you consider the benefits it we actually yield when uh, we have wonderful people in that system. Now, we know that um, God himself is a political being and he made humans also to be political. We are all political, st staging from the family life and to so primary school, secondary school, there's always policies in everything we do. So looking at the bigger picture, the policies, uh, state affair, the nation, nation, national affair, um, is actually a good thing for Christians to consider politics. There's nothing actually wrong with Christians being involved in politics. So it's, yeah. uh, for me, I think it's a good one. Wow. Mr. Miracle, do you agree to what he says? Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, it's a good one. Politics is something that um, every Christian student that have the um, more like the the calling for it. I, I, you know, since we are Christians, more more of the things we do is tied to what God has destined for us. So you don't venture into what God has not designed to do. There are people that are they are sent to those spheres. So if you have that in you, it's a wonderful place to be and. Sure, we will all support you so you can go there and help us make things right. So, viewers, as you heard from the able general coordinator and his able assistants, that they are both in support of the notion that Christian students should be actively involved in politics. Well, we'll see more about that. Miss Grace, yes, sir. you've not said anything. I would like to know what do you think about women? young Christian ladies getting involved in politics, do you think is the proper thing to do or do you think otherwise? You just want to know your perspective. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Now, it's very essential for people to be involved in politics, especially women, especially young ladies. Let's use Queen Esther, for example, in the Bible. Esther in the Bible was quite young, and as young as she was, she had the charisma, she had the attitude, and everything, and she became the queen. She became the, the queen to the king of that time. So it's very essential, and if we read further in the book of Esther, we'll notice that eventually Queen Esther was able to save her people when an opponent came up and said that he doesn't want any anyone who doesn't bow to him, anyone that doesn't respect him, he wants all of them to be killed. The whole people of that kind to be killed. So she came up to support her people. So it's very essential to be involved in politics, especially as a young lady. It's very, very essential. There's an added advantage to it. Wow. 
Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Gates. So, our young ladies out there, I hope you actually be thinking if you are being shy or very timid about joining politics, I think this is the right time for you to have a change of mind. Now, but currently, when we look at our country and even the world at large, we can see a lot of corruption, we can see a lot of wickedness. For example, we, we are all Nigerians, we are aware of how they use human beings to do you know, sacrifices and all that just to gain political positions. Do yes. you think Christians can play a role in changing this, this, this norm? that has been existing for a long time. Let us just start with Nigeria, because we are all Nigerians. So, so what do you have to say about that? Okay, so thank you so much. I, for any change to occur, it has to come from a person who is changing himself. So you, you don't have um, someone who is corrupt going to a system that is already corrupt to change it. The person can't bring change. And that's what we see in Nigeria politics and the world at large. So we, I, I, I want to take us to a scripture in the book of Daniel. Daniel had a vision. And in that vision, a stone was caught with that hand. And that stone crashed down um, an image in the king's vision. And the, the, what Daniel said, that that stone began to grow until it filled the whole earth. Now, from the starting, you see that the stone was very small, but it kept growing. Now, if we have Christians who actually are genuine and they are filled with the Holy Ghost, men like uh, Apostle Peter would say, look for men who are filled with the Holy Ghost and faith, who can appoint and send them. Because if they are filled with the Holy Ghost and faith, they can actually go into a system that is corrupt and they will not be corrupted. Because we, the issue we have is that we have persons who say they are Christians, but they are not. They go into the system and the system lectures them. The, teacher, <laughs> the system begins to teach them models of random of the world system, mm -hmm. of which they're supposed to bring the kingdom system into it. Now look at Daniel, for instance. Daniel came when he was a child, um, a teenager, very young, and they brought him to the Babylonian Empire. And they told them they were going to have they had to eat things sacrificed to idols. Just like if you go to Nigerian politics, you have to do this, you have to do that, yeah. those things. Daniel turned all those things down and he was wise. Because there is also a way you have to turn down things and not push out of a system. Mm -hmm. So Daniel was wise enough to turn things down and still remain in the system. And we saw that gradually he became accepted even to the highest degree. So, so that wisdom is very important for us. You can actually go into a system that is corrupt and bring um, purity into the system. But it's, it's going to be a gradual process. It's not going to be spontaneous immediately you come into the system. Wow. Thank you very much. Sir. So I think my take out from what you said was you can act there is a way you go into a system and effect change without being thrown out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if we all heard that. Yeah. So that kind of um, struck me because um, you know in my own in my opinion, I believe that the corrupt and the wicked leaders who are doing the systems are have actually seen one or two Christians who've come to effect change in time past. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yes, but when we look at the political structure we have in our country, for example, we get to understand that it's almost as if the Christians in those circles are not effecting change as they ought to. So could it be that they, they have a wrong approach to it? Could it be that they are not following what our GC just said that uh, there's a way you, if you try to effect change in the wrong way, you'll be pushed out of the system? So could it be that they are effecting change in the wrong way and being pushed out? I'd love to know what do you think about that. Like, in a, in, a, in a general sense, is there a better way to effect change without being pushed out of the system? Okay, thank you very much. You. Now, it's very essential. That's, that's where um, understanding politics comes in. It's very essential to understand the systems guiding politics. You don't just walk right into politics and say, okay, because you had a vision that God called you to be this and that and you want to be there. You have to understand the system. 
get to know the system, know the ups and downs of the system, know when to attack. The Bible clearly states that you cannot go into a strong man's house without first binding the strong yeah, man. That's true. So you would have to first understand the system. So the reason why it looks like most Christians go into politics and they are being overwhelmed by the evil people, by the bad attitude of the bad politicians, it's because most of them didn't really understand the system per se. They didn't really get to know the ground level of politics. Wow. Thank you very much for your contribution. Mr. Mia, could you have anything to add to that? Okay. Um, fit to add to what she has said, why um, even in the process of understanding a system, um, because one thing I know is if you know most persons they are found doing the wrong thing. You know, some people they labor in the wrong in the wrong vineyard. It was not assigned to them. You know, there are people that it has been given to them to create change. They don't do it with stress. No, we can do all things, but there are some that if they put a little effort, it's as if they are doing what hundred men can do. So you need to know where you are called to what you have the flair for. Because people are saying policy, policy. Most times, when you check the politics space, the uh, political space, you see that most people that jump into those spaces are people that either they are going because of one selfish interest. Now, we don't really have those that are going because of a genuine love for it. The people have passion, some people have passion for it. So, when the system is that, you see that they cannot be changed. So you can't say you want to change the system and then you are going there with the wrong mindset already. From the mindset point, you have already missed out on the system. So the system will now, because of that wrong mindset, it will keep feeding you with wrong mindset and wrong values. So but when you see those with the right mindset, they are coming in to, even if they are not going to benefit much, but we don't have much of those people. Even if they are not benefiting much from that space, they came in to see that things are done right. You see that? They will ensure that things are done right. Yes. But when you come in, you cheat, you cheat your way in, what brought you in is wrong. You have to still maintain yourself there by doing wrong things. And you still be thrown out by wrong things. So you see that the circle keeps continuing. So in as well as you are trying to understand this, then because most people, what they do, they just go into a system, they don't have the passion for it. But because they want to, because of the self they try to understand the system and benefit from it. Because you can actually benefit from any system if you just know the technicality in those systems, whether you love it or not. So people just come up and the next day they tell you that they want politics. They, they just know one or two things in politics. They know how the system works. They jump in. And then you see them, the, the system is so ambiguous. It just recycles them as part of the problem of the system. So, but when you see those that really have this drive, this passion for politics, you see that they are coming with the right mindset. That's why it's Christian, the one that the government leaders we have. They start, they didn't just come out from the blues, they started from somewhere. They have been serving, they have a track record of service, accurate, and you see that they have results. Yeah. You see that when they come in, they are not coming because of what the system is there to give to them. They are coming in to add to the system. And I think that's one of the mindsets we can come in. If we want to really see change, people must come into a system for what they will add to the system, not what they will take from the system. The system. Let me add to this. Okay. Thank, Thank you so you much. Um, now, I, I, I thank God for what he has said already. You have to come to out of the system, not to take from the system. Because that's what we see in Nigeria's yes. policies. Divide the national take. Everybody is coming for their share, mm -hmm. not for the um, and the, the interest of the nation or the state they are sent to serve. Now, I want to ask, do we send medical doctors? Uh, we just, do we get students from secondary school and tell them, okay, you want to be a medical doctor, go to... And go, go to the hospital and start working. Of course not. We don't do that. They study for six years in Nigeria. They strike outside. They go for internship for one year. They go for NYC. And before you know, they not. So you see that they are spending up to eight, nine years in training. And when they come out, they are full fledged. They know everything about the human system. And they could give proper counsel when it comes to the matter of health. Now, we don't also send people to go into ministry if they've not been taught and learned in the way of the Lord. In Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, sorry I'm quoting the scripture. The Bible said that, my son Timothy, these things have committed unto your hands. Teach it also to those who will be able to teach others. So you see that we have to come to a point. So I want to come into policies. I don't want the system to reject me. I want to remain in the system. Why are you coming in? What is your vision? You have to know what your vision is. Then the second thing is, 
have I been learned, have I learned in the way of the Lord? Like, have I come to a point of character? Because it's character that will bring you into the system and keep you. So, for instance, you have um, Christians who are working for very crew bosses. Like, the bosses are so mean, but to them, the bosses, are, they just, the bosses are just so love them. The bosses might be, might be very wicked men, but to that Christian, they just love that Christian. One, they might have tried that person in character and found the person to be worthy. And that is why we emphasize love, emphasize patience. And imagine you're a Christian, you have patience, even though you have a boss that is an occultist and is in politics, but he has found you to be patient, lawyer. I know our own humanity will don't forge it. But you see in politics today that, or even, um, I would not say we can even sure about the persons that are working with him. But if he can find you to be faithful in all things, even though you will not do the things he is going to do, as long as he's going to see that this one will, will be humble to the cause, eh? he can be a person that will tip you forward and ensure that you progress in your work. So you need the, the fruit of the Spirit eh, to come into a system and remain in that system. That's what I want to ask. Thank you very much Thank you. for your contribution. So we are most especially our students, because this is actually related more to students due to we are young people, we are the future of the nation. So now, coming back home, students who are enthusiastic about politics, who believe that they have the calling, who believe that they have the embracing, they have the potentials and the ability to succeed in this field of influence, what is your advice to them to be able to effectively play politics in a corrupt system and still be effective with the academics. I don't know if you understand my question. Okay. Yes. Like, because they say coming to school, your, your primary purpose of coming to university is to learn. Do you understand me? So, people who come into the university to learn, but they also have this enthusiasm towards politics. What do you advise them? How do they strike the balance? Okay. I would like to, I would like to hear okay, Thank you so much. I, I, I really love this question. And um, in the University of Otaka, we don't only believe in learning. We don't believe that you only came to learn and to live as someone who is learned. But we believe in both character and learning. So you see that there are learning alone will not form character in you. There are many other things that you you'll be involved with on campus that forms character. So you see social club, you see different things, you see Christian leadership. There are just several things that brings you in, it helps you relate with people, and that's where you form character. So when you come to when you come to the campus now, you did not only come for learning, you also came for um, um, to be equipped such that when you leave the campus, because learning alone will not put you there when you go outside of the walls of the university. So it means that there are other things you need to do so that you'll be able, so imagine you want to be a politician and they told you that all you need, what you came to do is quit to learn. So when you finish learning, what will you now do? You discover that in learning and character, you are developing your self-esteem. You, you will need it when you go outside there as a politician. So that's the character part of it. So even politics, XCG position in Unipolitics is part of the character formation and learning. So even as a, as a believer that is interested in politics, it's part of your school. It's part of the experiences. It's going to be part of the sky. Everything you'll be needing outside of the world. So it, 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 it's not just learning. So you need everything. Yeah, inclusive. Thank, thank you very much, yeah, sir. So Ms. Grace, she's actually a political person. So I'd like to hear your contribution towards this. Okay. Thank you very much. So um, I'm very grateful to God, and I'm super excited that JCCF in Newport has a system by which you could learn politics from. Like, okay, the community of which I'm the chairperson with the JPIC um, that Joint Political Implementation Committee. We have an academy that Joint Political Leaders Academy. Now this academy helps to instill right standing in politics, understanding politics in a way that pleases God. So speaking on um, various places by which you could learn politics and balance academics from, if you're privileged to come across um, JCCF in report and you're able to get into JPIC, you're able to go through the academy, there are a lot of things, a whole lot of things you'll be able to learn. So 
it's a good thing that JCCF Uniport is not just concerned about the spiritual part of our lives. We, we are also concerned about the political part of our lives and of the life of every student. So it's very essential that each, anyone who desires to learn, the desire has to be there. So if anyone truly desires to know more about politics, because it can be very taskful to be a student and also be involved in politics. So if you desire to know more about, and you happen to be in Unipot, you, you are the best place because you could ask around for where GCCF um, secretariat is, ask for any of the coordinators, try to make inquiries so that you'll be involved in this academy. Because this academy now, you get to know various persons who did not just, they are not just politicians, they are also persons who pass through school. So they are able to tell you their perspective of how to handle politics as a student because it's really, really taskful and it's very distracting. So so when you get involved in this academy, you'll be able to learn so much more about politics, especially being a student. Thank you very much, Miss Grace. Just knowledge they say is power. I'm quite sure that some of you possibly might not have heard about the Joint Political Leaders, uh, Leaders Academy, yes. right? Yes, sir. So this is actually an opportunity for you to develop yourself. We are really grateful for the opportunity like uh, created by the JCCF for political enthusiasts and all of that. So, Mr. Miyako, I'm sure you are looking at it. Do you still have anything to say as you guys do? Just a little bit. Just add to what they have said. What they have, everything they said is true. Now, um, still on that light, when we talk of academics and politics, um, you know, um, when we when we come into school, most persons that came to school, they came in as a Christian. So, you are coming in, so the idea of um, I came to school primarily for study and then I came to go, it means you think you are not really, but you are not, you know, in those days, what they do before they send you to the university, they make sure that you know your left or your right and then, see, like, what, when people come to school, back in, in, in the days of our fathers, see, they come with what they want already. If they are coming for politics from these universities, they start hitting politics and they will finish and they are entering the political system. They, they came for business, they are hitting business from the university and then they are going out. So if you come for a um, career, you want to be an academician, all those things, you start hitting from there. So you see that the idea of saying you came to school, to, it means you didn't really, you don't know what you want to do. Any man that knows what he wants to do with his life, that has that discovered purpose, you see that they start looking at where the, the purpose is fitting, which niche are they falling under. If it is tech, you start hitting tech. You see that, so you don't use your time, go around school, because the way the university and uh, curriculum is structured is in a way that it can accommodate one or two things you want to add to it. It's more like you don't get to learn every day of your life. You still have flexibility, even if there are some courses that you can be doing for class every but you see that there are time frames you can master the system and then have flexible time where you can use for other things so as you're coming as a christian first thing first you're a christian and then as a christian there's something you're part of a kingdom and the kingdom has a, a, an expectation already yeah. so you are coming in to the university to influence the system because the university is on that system on its own so even in that system you get to learn about other systems and that's where all this coming so in the university system, we know that one of the um, one of the top systems we have in the university system that is the political system. Now, I'm using this so that you can really understand. It's more like a, a big egg, and then inside there's something that the political system tends to overrule everything that students do. The student union government, if they should call for a strike, and you see that students start going here, and you, even if you came to learn, you just came to learn, those decisions are affecting you. Exactly. Now, you are falling victim in a game you should not be a victim. So yes. at that time you are not supposed to be a victim. As a Christian student, you should be a master of all games because the Bible says you are the light of the world. Exactly. So you see that as a light, they don't hide light. The Bible says no one lighted it, 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 it can't do and put it under a bush. No, they bring it on top of it. So we are not supposed to be team. Now this I'm saying is primarily for those that are sensing that God is moving them to the political space. You cannot let politics go like that because what we have done so 
far, even in our secular world, you see that we have left the political space unguarded. No man is there. We are not man in that space. And the devil is doing a whole lot on that space. And knowing fully well that with that space, he can propagate every other nonsense. You see that he keeps targeting men. So, you see, when you want to capture a city, you don't go capturing the small food soldier. You go for the top general, you eat the king, you eat the general. When you take those ones, everybody will surrender. So, and that's what we need to do in time like this. Now, we need to now start looking for a way to bring in the... If people in the world can do it, they can balance it. I think Christians, we have more grace. In fact, the grace of God is more sufficient for us to balance right. academics right. and politics. Especially right. those that have the, that sensing God moving them to that space. The grace is already there. It's just to be more diligent. You know, most times people use Christianity to approve mediocrity. So, uh, we don't want to do any extra thing. You know, the human brain is elastic. So, the more you pump it with things, it tends to expand. So, even if you tell people that you, you can't take it, you see that the same, your friend, your age mate, your age, you see that if they can pump themselves with more information and they give themselves more time, they will deliver more. And in the next two years, you can be at the same pace. Yes. And this was a placement. So, you, we should come up from this um, ideology, this mindset, because I think it's, it's not really right. We have more grace than those of the world. In fact, when you came into Christ, a lot of things, a lot of things was added to your your um, your personality. When you study about um, your identity in Christ, you see that a lot of things Christ has done for us. So we, we are not under the law of uh, sin, death, and flesh. No, we are now above that. So I think we can do more if we really put our heart to it. So I think that's the first point we need to start with, even before that, looking at the balance. Because most people, even before looking at the situation, as they're coming to school, from home, they're telling them not to near politics, face studies. As good as it sounds, this is what has made our country, even our universities, to be the way it is. The people, the right people that should take these positions, they are not there. So the wrong people keep propagating what they want. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. Um, okay, yeah. To add to what he said, um, so basically, politics is the system of government. So if you overlook politics, you are overlooking the system of government. So whatever, whoever is at that part of the government, whoever is there, whoever is the ruler, whatever he says binds on every citizen of that place. So if you overlook politics, if tomorrow the ruler should come up and say, okay, everybody do like this, you must do this. It's a must, even because even the Bible says respect constituted authority. Exactly. So if we don't get involved in politics, if we don't get to know more about politics, we would have no choice than to be walking about with like sheep without shepherd. So it's very essential for us to know much about politics, especially as we are young people. Thank you very much. So viewers, I know there are some of you out there who are enthusiastic about politics. Some of you may not have been a nation to the university, but even at home you have it at the back of your mind that you really want to come to school and play the game of politics. Not just playing it as a game, but being an agent of change, as Daniel was, as Nehemiah was, even as Joseph was. So I hope that with these few points presented by our GCC executives, they have not been able to confuse you, but to convince you that you're on the right track. But however, now, we need to strike a balance. Having concluded the fact that uh, being in politics as a student is not a bad idea. Now, we know, especially in the University of Portacos, I think there is this um, slogan that uh, they use for you in that is unique stress. Am I right? Yes. So we know that the, the academic institution is actually very stressful. So how do leaders, politicians, like how do they manage stress? Because seeing that you only are outside into politics, the Christian politics, yeah. how do you manage stress? Like, can you give us examples, practical situations, in a way that your academics is not suffering, and at the same time, your political career and the work you're doing for God, even in politics, is not suffering? I would like to hear from you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, the issue of balance is a very important one because um, the truth is, everybody juggles things. Everybody juggles. 
Yeah. Uh, even a child juggles things. <laughs> yes, a child juggles responsibility. When you're in primary school, you go to school, you have assignments to do, you still have play to wash. You still have to go errand for mommy. You still have to be in the shop for mommy. There is always something to juggle. So, and it does not get better as you grow. Yeah. It does not so get better as you climb the cadres of life. So, um, um, as a student, coming into school, unless you want to be an average student, uh, finish as an average student, you not go into the world and start having average results. <laughs> now look, let's look, look at the likes of the former governor of River State, the right honorable Rosemary uh, uh, Mechi, the, the just um, um, handed over governor, the handed over to the current governor now, um, Barista Yeso, Yeso Wike, for instance. He, when he was on campus, he played politics. And as funny as it sounds, if you look at our political system across Nigeria, you will find out that those who are part of the Aluta movement on campus, they are still the persons that are representing our states and nation till today, even in the local government level. Why those persons that live the average life, who most times they end up being counselor. Those people that did not go to university, did not play camp uh, policy in the university, they most times end up being counselors. Why? Because there will be networking going on as you go up the cadre. So you must juggle something. So now um, I have my academics and I have politics and I have to juggle them. And if you even look very well, you see that you have more than just that. Too. If you look very well, you have more than just that. Too. So, but let's talk about it too because that is where our emphasis is currently. So, you 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 need to attend uh, state meetings. You need to attend national meetings. You need to attend the uh, chapter meetings. The ICG can call for a meeting at any point in time, and you need to be there to show that you are well represented. And your lecturer will not wait for you because you are not there. Assignments will not wait for you. All those things they will not wait for you. So um, for me, let me talk as a Christian politician, um, um, coming in to service from my level 200 ending. As I came in, I discovered I was working when I got admission. So I was working and was still schooling, working and schooling. So when I got to my 200 level and I became the Bible study secretary of Knife in Port, for instance, I discovered that I can no longer keep up to that um, that uh, job that I had because it's it's always clashing. Mm. So then they were always clashing. So I had to keep that one so that I could juggle my academics now and my service to God on campus. Mm. So what is your capacity? If you can't juggle three things, why not keep up with two? Mm. You know, some persons, they can only, they, have, they, they, they know their capacity, what they can do. Why some but there are persons too that don't want to grow their capacities. <laughs> so grow as as I kept on growing, I discovered that ah the way the meetings are being now, if I don't convert to a night reader, it will be difficult for me. So automatically I I I, I went to library when there is no class. Then I went to night class. I was almost going for night class every day. And that has not changed even till now. I, it's always in the night. But look at the day, there's scarcely fixed meeting in the night. It's, it's hard to find meeting holding in the night. So you're a politician, you're a political student, you've gone into the system, and you know that you are always having meetings. What happened to your night? You know, when they party, they party in the night now. They don't discuss serious things in the night. So you must not party in the night. Do what you can do in the day. In the night, you can bring that, bring, take yourself, do your assignment. Those lectures you miss because you will certainly miss lectures if you be faithful to politics. Yeah. It's, it's part of the sacrifice. Yeah. So you, you, when you miss those lectures, take the notes, read through them, get your textbook and study. Then during exam time, I think you need to not do a short down because I believe everybody will be in the pressure of exam. Yeah. So you need to not short down and be serious with your uh, your studies. But once you are serious, you can cover grounds for things you have missed. You know, there is a saying that comrade is third class, comrade is two point two. But you can make it two one if you do these things. Don't say no, I'm a day reader, I'm a day reader, when you know that you have something now that is taking that day from you. So you switch tonight. Then ensure that you also you have a, your lecturers know about what you are doing. <laughs> because when they know what you are doing, in a way, 
when you submit assignment late, they can also yes, they can always yeah. Work. Then you can also have among them a counselor, someone that can always mediate for you. It, because this thing is not something you are into just only just you. You have to have a someone that counsels you, even among your lecturers. Because when they know, you can always have your your way around some things, and it's going to help you juggle your academics and policies. And at the end of the day, you can come up with a two one or a first class. Yeah. Thank you very much. So um, I think you made a lot of points there, like one of which I I picked out of it was the, the aspect of, of having to make sacrifices. You know, if we are ever going to succeed in doing a lot of things, we'll have to definitely learn to sacrifice and actually inconvenience ourselves. I was reading my Bible yesterday and I saw a place in the book of Psalms that said, um, You have enlarged me through distress. Distress talks about discomfort. <laughs> you know, David was actually telling the Lord that yeah. the Lord has enlarged him. So he has helped him build his capacity through discomfort. So I don't think that this is actually a wrong move for Christians who are enthusiastic about politics today. So I would love to ask, what is your advice on Christian leaders, uh, Christian women, sorry, who, who are struggling by managing their academics and their politics? What do you think are the necessary steps for them to take to come out of that struggle? Okay, thank you very much. So I would speak in general before I come into the women's sector. So in general, in addition to what he had said, he had earlier stated, if you want to be involved in politics and you also want to balance it with your academics, there's one very vital thing that should not be underemphasized, which is prayer. I would say that Christians have advantage. Every Christian, no Christian has an excuse for not being an edge over others. So knowledge is power. If we know the power behind prayer, we would be more intentional about prayer. So having said that, if we put so much effort in prayer and in the study of the Word of God, we would get to know, okay, these are the things we need to do at so of time. So for persons who are not like the night readers, they can also be the day readers. Like for example, me, I'm a day reader. And alongside, I have so many other things doing like poetry, baking, and I still combine to the politics and still being a Christian, which I don't take for granted. So how I do this is that I'm a day reader. I don't read at night. So what I do is that I try to plan the 24 hours in a day. I try to plan my 24 hours. But this is what I do every week. Every weekend by Saturdays, I plan out my next week and how it's be. So I would know that, okay, by this time of the day, I'm meant to be doing this. So there is no time of the day that you always be occupied. In your 24 hours, the most time you'll be occupied in meetings and classes will be at random 18 hours or at most 20 hours. So you cannot have classes for the whole of 24 hours in a day. So what you're going to do is that at those intervals, and if you find out, whenever you go for classes, it's not all the classes you go for that lecturer is present. Yeah. So you could use that interval to read when you're able to cover up for probably because you definitely have to miss some classes. So because of sacrifice. So you use those periods to read and then your night hours, you use them to do every other you study because understanding politics is not just done in the daytime, it's not just something you just do at once. So at night, like for example for me, what I do is that every other study I do both for my baking, my poetry about politics, I do them at night. I study, I do intense study about these three things at night and I'm able to accumulate a lot of knowledge from it. As I said earlier, knowledge is power. Yes. If you're able to know how to manage our time very well, be able to scale through. So coming into women being engaged in policies and striking a balance, um, it's it's usually kind of intimidating on the feminine gender because most politicians you see around are the male, the guys. So it's usually very tasking. So what I would encourage every lady that would want to go into politics and is also a student is that as much as possible build this bold confidence in you 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 cannot you cannot be intimidated growing up my father would always teach me 
that when you're walking you don't bend your head down it starts from small you walk with boldness you don't act like people around you are some scorpions i know it can be very difficult to be asking because before i could um overcome that whole low self-esteem it took a while until i had to pray about it i had to be intentional about being bold so boldness is what every lady needs every lady that wants to go into politics you need boldness because you certainly find some person so many men who will be there to intimidate you so many men who would say okay is it not let me just give you so so amount and once now our ladies that we ladies are attracted to material things so there are so many men who are ready to give up everything just for them to get that position so if you're a lady and you're listening to me be courageous you can be a politician you can be a student you can still come out a first class maximize every time you have as much as possible reduce activities like there are some unnecessary activities like to hang out with your friends and to go swimming and all of that cut down on those they are they are beautiful as the bible clearly says that all things are lawful but not all things are expedient so cut down on a lot of activities you are going through you may say that okay you need this you're a lady you need to hang out you need to get to know about life you can know everything from where you are you don't have to be everywhere to know everything so as i would say be courageous be bold be ready to take up the task thank you very much thank you very much ma ladies i think she has uh, said more than enough Mr. Mira, could you have anything to add to us? Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I think um, when we talk of balance for politics and um, academics, um, one of the um, things we should look out for is mentors. You know, the role a mentor plays. What do so that it looks small, but the good long way to save you from stress. You know, when you have that uh, mentor, either a mentor, a senior colleague that can guide you. So that it, if you're in a school like Unipot, I know that most times what they do is a repetitive um, learning. So there's no new thing. Everything, in fact, even the Bible says there's no new general So somebody has gone through that path. There is a pattern for it. Yeah. You have not just discovered the right pattern. Yeah. So how did they get first class? Now, this is how I do things. You go to the best, you learn from them. You go to the worst, you learn from them. You go to the mediocre, you just learn from everybody. Nobody, you know, the, 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 the white man says something that um, even the fools, you need to learn from them. So you learn how not to be foolish. Mm. Nobody, you learn from them. Mark, you learn everything. Now, you now being a Christian, being someone that has vision, that's where vision comes in. You need to know what you are coming in to do. You need to have these things, this goal. You, have, you need to know your purpose. You know, the other thing you don't. You see people that have an A, they know where they are going to. They are something they don't just engage it. Most of the people you are, we have issues with that people that they just came in and they are more like escorting everybody. So mm-hmm. anybody that knows the way, they are following them. You know, the this saying we use in Nigeria, follow who no road. As good as it sounds, if you don't know the road to your destiny, you will follow those that know their own road and you follow them to death. Mm-hmm. So you escort them down and if God doesn't help you, you would have be, you will be lost in it. And then before you find out that you are in the wrong path, you have gone the long way. So you are following who knows road because you know. So why not let's sit back, spend time in knowing the road first of all. What do you want to do? As I come into school, I think your your one day should be the time where you explore everything, explore as much as possible. Know what you want to do. That is it politics. Do you want to serve in Christian church? Do you want to be a leader? Do you want to be a top leader? Do you want to be among those that are making decisions on campus? Do you want to be those that carry so much fire? Do you want to be those that are into the business part? They are making money. Tech? Know those things then. Start reaching out to those systems. There are people that are gatekeepers. Once you go to the right gatekeeper, you gain access into the system. Even in politics, you don't need to struggle for many things. Yes, if you know the right, and that's where networking comes in, you now need to know strategically you are networking. And then that's to add to everything they have said. While you are planning, juggling through things, you know you should be sensitive to know when it is going beyond your limits. You know, no man, you know, room was not beaten, no man, 
just gain capacity with it. Every month there is a track record. At a point, maybe when you are doing two things, it can be hectic. But when I say so I can say something from my year two, and then even at the point when you wanted to look as if it was becoming heavy, I, I reduced, okay, no more going home, even if my house was not too far, but I was also a leader in my church at home. So trying to juggle between three kinds of leadership, you, are, you have a brand, you are working with, you have this, you have that. So you call that on things, just say, I'm not available for now. So what you're trying to do is you are trying to f- concentrate those energy on one thing. So that if you achieve this one, imagine when you are done with exam, you have those one you use to settle back the differences you had those you bring back those system back to speed and then you carry them again. You see that the more you do those things, you get capacity for those things. But now all these things I'm saying now, it should be easier when you have a mentor. Somebody has gone through that path. That's why um, the, um, um my sister here that just spoke for me, she said something about the joint political um, um, leaders and academy. When you have people that have gone through that path, okay, so how did you get first class? You became a leader on campus. You did all these things, and you came out well. That means there is a secret I don't know. And they start telling you that story. From there, you pick out the wisdom that are there. You need to know those people. Now, there are some people you meet, they teach you rubbish. They don't know anything. They didn't even know how they came to the system. They cheated their way through. We know that that happens. You know, there is not everybody's wisdom you take. And even as I am like this, I can just ask you, okay, what's your wisdom? And the way you say it, and it looks so easy. We know that you don't have any record of any sacrifice. There's no track record of this thing, this process. But when you see those that actually engage those processes, you can learn a thing or two from them. So you see the wisdom. Because it's not all wisdom that are applicable to you. Some people are from a rich home, some people are from a poor home. So someone that got first class from a rich home, that system you use might not be applicable to somebody coming from a poor room. Because now you need to have a source of income because politics is quite expensive. Whether you like or it's money, then you use money to play politics. You need money. So it means if you are coming from a poor home, you are trying to find a source of income, a stable source of income to power politics. Then you are shopping the school so you see that you have a lot. You can't go meet someone that everything he has all his views paid. They gave him extra money for college, so he can just have this money. You don't need to know the same system. You need to go and study from those that they came in from the back side of the world. They came in poor, broke. They entered the system. They are working. They did well. They did politics, and now they you start studying those things. And when you see, you see that those things they help you, they guide you, they serve as a path guide. So you know what to do at certain times in your life. There's always a time where everything will look very hard. Sure. But that's where you need to press on. If you have a goal, you have an, a purpose already. You know, that's one thing we take believers. When you come into Christ, what's God telling you to do? Yes, God sending you to what's your purpose? Having that thing, as small as it sounds, it can it can shape your life. It will tell you where to be. We are not to be. If you know God is not sending you to the politics, to politics, why am I suffering for politics? I just need to be around those that are political, those that make decisions, and you benefit from it. It's not, it's not, you know, we are all not going, we are all uh, we, we are not all sent to politics. We all are not sent to politics, yeah. We are not going to sit in, at the table and make decisions. But some of us will be close friends to those that sit at that table. And if they turn to a politician, you are actually a politician, you are getting the food because now you get to decide things yeah. on the table because you have somebody on the table. So you need to just know where you are. And if it is to give support, because there are people that come to give moral support, they encourage those that are actually doing politics, secular politics, and they see the same thing. There are some that will serve in fellowship very well. They will get to the top levels, you know, as they're calling their titles. You know that you can't really do this and do normal school SG politics. There's no way you can juggle that. If you can, that means you are really a strong person because Already, this step is demanding. It's a, it's, it's a full policy on its own, a full system. And then SUV is also demanding. So one will actually suffer. So you have to tell yourself the truth. Okay, do you want to take this up or you want to drop this? You look at the chances. Okay, God is calling me to um, 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 follow this in his vineyard. You are doing more, you are a ministerial kind of person. Or God is calling you to the secular world. And you find, once you find that part, you see that you now start meeting people. God, most times, as a Christian, God brings people that can help you. That's where prayer comes in. The more you pray, if God knows that you are weak and you are fainting, if God cannot encourage you with this word, He brings men that have gone to that path. He brings their example. He, he lays their life.
life there. So you just sit and pick courage and pick wisdom, and then you run. So once you have that in mind, you know that this is not it's not impossible. You can do it. And then there's still something else that we need to consider. You know, some people they have this. So when we come to school, sometimes our parents they make us come in and say one first class. You you know yourself you don't really want this class. You don't want it. You just come and do people's work. It's more like your parents are sending you on an errand and you are going. That's where you, and you know when you are not the one powering it, you don't really commit yourself to it. Any decision you are not making on your own, eh, you see that you might not really fight for it, whether you do it or not. Then this attitude you display over it. Ah, it's not my own, it's my father that wants it. So you need to own the vision. So it has to be a vision. If you are coming for first class, fine, you own it. This is what I'm coming for. It's not my father that wants it. It's, I want it for myself. You see that the commitment you give to it will be more than what you give if they send you to go and get the first class. Same thing as politics. If you are coming to politics because you know that this is necessary for you, you want to be in politics, you will commit yourself to it. You will do all it takes to stay in the system. You will not die. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I, I want to say that um, the different campus fellowships is a unique for especially blessed to have such intelligent leaders. I mean, look at each of their contributions. I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed. I'm really blessed. Yes. So, just before we wrap up, you know, there are some Christian students in the political sector who have been to the system and they are now being overwhelmed by the system. Some of them, their moral values are declining. Some of them, their academics are suffering. Some of them are basically standing in between two options. They are losing their Christian faith, they have lost their prayer life, lost their Bible study life, and their consecration is desiccated. So what are your advice? What advice would you give to such Christian students? How do you think they can build up their convictions again and get back into the game and affect what God wants them to do? Yeah, thank you so much, sir. I was, I was going to ask your permission to, to come into this topic, but I thank God you asked the question. Yes. Now, I want to begin by saying, one, Ensure you don't go into a system without having capacity for it. Ensure you don't go, even though it's a Christian organization. Don't go, when you go, you only stain your, your, your image. Your integrity will be questioned. So many things about you, you are going to just put yourself down, such that for future, they, they will not reference you for good. So it's important, first of all, the Bible said, if a man wants to go out for a war with another king, does he not first sit down and think, this king I'm going to meet, will I conquer him, conquer this king with the army I have? So if he thinks about it, if he cannot, he will go and tell the peace, please. Have, let's, let's just have the, uh, agreement, whatever you want, I will, I will, pay, I will pay some homage to you. If you wants to build a house, does he just start and say, you see that you count the cost. So if you have not counted the cost, you don't, 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 don't go. Don't go, right? Even though the Lord has showed you in a vision. <laughs> <laughs> Even though an angel is speaking, don't go because you will lose your Christian life. You will lose your faith. And even that policies, if, even in the future, you will not be a good reference for anybody. We have persons in campus now today that tomorrow, when the Lord has elevated us, we will tell the world that this one, don't trust this one, we know them when they were on campus. That's because they were not ready, they didn't count the cause. They they've not said they built capacity for leadership. Character, zero. So all these things have to put in consideration. Now, let's say you've already made a mistake of not counting the cause, and you have entered into the system. Exactly. Now the system is not frustrating you. You discover that you're no longer hearing God's voice. In fact, going to church is worrisome, it's tiring. Even your moral standard is being questioned. You were a boy, you didn't need to fornicate, but now you can't count how many sisters. A sister, you didn't need to drink, you didn't need to do all these things. All of a sudden, you are not doing it, dancing, smoking, shisha, all those things. I discover your Christian life is in question now. I think what you should do is, that is 
if it's possible at that point in time. But there's a point of no return. But just in case you have not reached the point of no return, I want to beg you. I want to beg you, uh, take a pause. There's nothing wrong. They say he who um, who sees a battle and runs away, lives to fight. I know that. <laughs> so take a pause, retreat, go again and build up, fill up those vacuums, then come back ready. Because that's the only thing I have to cancel. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you very much. I mean, it should, it should take a lot of effort, a lot of sacrifices for someone who has um, dipped his hand in, in honey. Oh. And he's already eating it to that same level. Yes. <laughs> the person is. needs to be a sincere Christian. Yes. That I either choose between my work with God and this thing. Even though God, God's hands is, is involved in this thing that I'm doing. I, I started. Yes. yes. So that's actually a very valid point. Thank you very much. I confess. So, Mark, you have something to add? Yes, I do. So, in addition to that, um, it's very essential, in addition to what he said about retreating, it's very essential to take it. Retreat is not just for people who are weaklings. Mm. It's not just for you may you think you may have the capacity quite all right, no problem, it's beautiful. But at one point or the other, you have to take back a little time, re strategize. Re strategizing is not a bad idea at all. Failure is not the end. But um, the fear of failure is, is what ends people more because most persons don't even fail. They have this fear that they are going to fail and that's what ends them. So it's it's good, it's most essential to sit back, re-strategize, think about, okay, what can I do to make this happen? So when you think about these things, it's very important to look up to persons who have gone through this path. That's where the part of mentors come in. You walk up to your mentor, tell them that, okay, this is how, because before you can call someone your mentor, you have to be free with the person. So you walk up to the person and tell the person that, okay, this is how I feel, this, this kind of thing is happening to me, what do you think I should do? And the mentor will definitely tell you, okay, try this, try that, because they've gone through that path. So for adventure, your mentor is not reachable at that time. What you could possibly do is to tell it to God. I know there are times at that point you may not even feel like God is hearing you or God is even listening to you. But just pour out your mind to him. Tell him how it's how it is in you, like how he's doing you. Let me just use that word. Just pour out your mind to him. Then one way or the other, if because God does not despise a broken and a contrite heart, he does not once he sees that okay, you're willing to change, you're willing to learn, he's very willing to help you. He'll be ready at every point to help you. So it's either he'll help you through your mentor or he'll send someone else one way or the other. It's just very essential to just sit back and re-strategize. Look for plans that would work out well. Thank you very much for your contribution. Mr. Samia, we just had a, a GC. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, on that, um, you know, retreat is something that um, even in, um, in war or in battles we, we use those words. The reason is because we need to go back to the drawing board and get the drawings. We need to draw it. We need the picture. We need to be sharp. We need to, we need to be sure of our convictions. So, so that are sent on battles. That's why Christians are going for politics. You are a soldier already. You are going for war. The war should be something that is applicable to you. Once the war, the battle became fierce, the voice of God is, sound, is now faint. The picture is no longer clear. Please retreat. You know, even in Christian leadership, we have times where we retreat. Maybe things are not going the way we want. We retreat. We call everybody back to the point of retreat. We go back and sit with God. Get the drawing straight. So we need that even those going to politics. And that's why you see that the recommendation for those going to politics is the kind of the, the, the training that they should take currently. The kind of thing that a minister of God should be taking. If an apostle needs to train so much, study his Bible, know everything that is written and hear from God. Someone going to point should not be left on guard. He must go the same way. So he should be sure that if he's entering that system, the system cannot influence him. Now, what is what he has inside is able to 
influence the system. Most times, when you go without something inside, you see that what is outside will not affect what is inside. But the right way of life is that what is inside affects what is outside. And that even the Bible says, what defies the man is not what comes into him. It is what comes out from him. For you to have something that must come out from you, there is no word, you don't have anything, you don't have a prayer life, and you say what God is saying to um, you. See, you are just going for your barrier. They will just finish you. And then at the end of the day, we don't know. We can't, we can't, defend, we can't, we can't tell um, who you were when you enter and who you are now that you are in the okay. system. So there's nothing to write to me about that. So so please, you should always be. And for those of us that are already, they are there and they are facing this problem. Now, I think this is the time where they, they need to now seek the face of God. Now, you need to more like you know, that time when you are dying, the devil tries to make sure that you, you he he eliminates you from prison. That's when you need to get committed to God, to gathering of brethren, because that's where you get strength. And you know, I've seen some uh, leaders, some political leaders, that, Christian political leaders that say God is in them, though they are still growing in, in faith. And they don't really know some things. So if you wonder how come you are actually going as a Christian political leader, they go unprepared. They are not ready for what they just feel that the ground is just a, you are not going there as a senior, you are going as a man of war. What you are doing there, what they do there is so technical that you need to you, are, you must have big capacity. So anytime you feel you are painting, your capacity is more that's time to repeat, build capacity, go for knowledge, reach out to mentors, reach out to your spiritual head, because you must have spiritual confidence, you must have spiritual head. You should reach out to those people, reach out to believers. You should have counterparts that are also believers. Because you must not all have, your friends should not um, be only in political space. You should have friends in other spaces. You should have people that can encourage you, people you can open up to. And you see that before you know it, you're out of those situations. Thank you very much. Let, let me just add to something because it is important to state, especially as we started talking about retreating. Now, uh, retreating is not just when you have come into this kind of situation we're talking about. Now, um, for you not even to get to that point where you need help and you need to pull out entirely. But the kind of retreat we're talking about is pulling out entirely to come back. But well, there's another retreat that while you're in the system, you are just joining and retreating. For instance, we see our men of God, they go on in three days, they spend three days with the Lord. They are still ministry. They didn't pull out, they didn't close down the ministry. So even a politician, a Christian politician, you can decide to be going on a retreat once in two, once in a month, and take up take out three days. And when you take out such retreats, you have your sanity back. You can you can remember from where you started. You go to the Lord. You pick up Christian books and read, and read other books too that can help guide you. So retreating should be a continuum for you not to get to a point where you're losing yourself. Yeah. Then if you've already lost yourself, then I think total retreating. <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, it's almost as though the conversation should not end because uh, a lot of value, valuable knowledge is being dispensed. But just for the last question, and I think this is actually very important. What is the strongest quality you feel every Christian politician must have, especially in a corrupt political system such as what we have in Nigeria, in Africa, and the world at large? What are the strongest character traits every Christian politician must have? Or as a student, that they can start developing now that they are young, because train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. So I would love to hear what you have to say. Yeah, thank you so much. And the question is kind of looking somehow. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because when immediately you asked that question, my mind came back to the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. And while I wanted to start thinking about the love, joy, peace, the Lord just had to remind me, no, it's just one fruit, yeah. love. Just one fruit, love. And you know, sometimes love will be interpreted as just by being patient. Sometimes love will be interpreted as being faithful. So it's all one. All nine in one. So it's complete. It's there. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, what you receive as a character is that a character we call love. And you can find every other thing that will begin to describe as character you need. 
you find joy, you find peace. When you are when when you are already on your way, you discover there is a place you need joy. When all others are, are, are down and you need joy, to keep on. There's a place you need peace. When people have said things about you and you need to still forgive them and stay real with them and still have a calmness inside of you, so that you don't saw your hand. You need peace. You see patience, faithfulness, and so on. So you will need them. But I just said all these are inside one fruit called love. And that you can read the Bible in the book of um, Galatians chapter 5, 22, that you will see them. Then you now begin to ask the Lord to help you cultivate it. Because um, you having the Holy Spirit, you already have it. You know, um, the day you plant a mango seed is not the day you begin to eat the fruit. It takes time. So it, it has to be on a fertile ground. It has to receive dew from heaven. And it has to begin to grow one year, two years. And there will be a time that it will be, the tree will be mature. But yet, there is no fruit to show. So even in your Christian, well, there will be a time that there is no fruit of love manifesting in you. But just keep up with the Holy Ghost. Keep up. Continue in your growth. There will be a time that these things will manifest. I, for one, there was a time I was asking the Lord that help me to love like Jesus. Us do and when I prayed that prayer, I was I was person, I was a person that previously I used to be very bitter, had implosive anger. But after that prayer, what the Lord did to help me cultivate it was actually bringing situations that would trigger my anger more and bitterness. And instead of asking me forgive, so every time I forgive, I stepped up. Every time I forgive, it was like I was cultivating. So a time came when people were offend and. I can let it go and even speak to them about it. So even you're going into politics, you need to cultivate it. You need to even trust the Lord to help you begin to cultivate it. This brings us to what we say, you need to be ready. So once you have cultivated this, then you are ready. Do you have anything to add to that one? Yeah, just a little addition. So, love is very essential. The Bible clearly states that God is love. Yes. Yes. So, if there are times, there are several times when um, the the battle might be, I'll call it a battle because it's, it's, it's indeed a battle. Politics is not just something you just go and however it is, you continue. It's a battle. So there are times when the battle will be tough, very tough. And what you need is patience. There are, there are several times like, okay, I'll use patience. For example, like for me, I'm this kind of person who it, it takes the grace of God for me to understand things and it takes patience, a level of patience for me to understand people and systems. So if I if God didn't help me to be patient in some situations, I might have just misbehaved and taken some situations likely I'll just take it haywire and it won't end well. So patience is very, very important. That's what brings us back to love. Now love covers a multitude of sin. Love covers the multitude. So there are so many things that people, because human beings will always be human beings. Yes, I'm exactly. So human beings will always be human beings. And they are, they are, let me not really say prone, but they are prone to offenses. They are, they are prone to offend you. They, it's more like it's a natural phenomenon. So it cannot just be avoided. So you need love. And God is love. So if you get to know more about God, but if you study his word better, we we'll have no perfect way to handle love. Thank you very much, Ma. I mean, what more can we say? But I'm sure Mr. Mira could just want to give us a summary of what I'll be saying. Okay. Uh, I'll respond to what they have said so far. What they are saying is very, once you have love, you can, you know, if our leaders can just have love, right. the same love that Christ has for his church, you see that most of the strong make. And love also instills fear. You know, if you love God, you will fear. The Bible says, if you love me, you will do my commandments. You can't tell God that you love him and you're not doing his commandments. So if you have the love for God and love for God, you have the love for God. Thank you very much, sir. Um, whereas, even the Bible says, there are by this whole faith and love.
the greatest of history is more. And the greatest commandment Jesus Christ left to his disciples and to every one of us is to love your neighbor as people that should love themselves. So, with this all being said, we've come to the end of tonight's show. I sincerely hope that you are blessed, I was blessed, and uh, I would love to all the other people to so especially thank the JCCF executive for gracing this occasion. We are really, really excited and glad that you took the time. In fact, the spirit of excellence and wisdom is just on every one of you because it was an impactful session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You are welcome. So, viewers, I'll see you next time, next week. God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.